First of all, thank you very much for joining today. We couldn't be happier to have you all here. Um, let's do some proper introductions first. I'm Soti, uh, community manager myself, and um, I'm uh, James, aka Goblin, uh, CTO of Hack the Box as well. And uh, we are gathered here today in order to do a NAMA to answer all of your questions and go one by one in order to answer whatever you want. So um, I hope uh, before we start with the questions, I want to do um, a little bit of an introduction that this week we released Battlegrounds and we are very happy about it. Not this week, actually one week before uh, on this Friday. Um, we couldn't be happier. And now today we announced that all free users have also two games while we're on the beta test phase two. So make sure to join and make sure to play your battles and give us feedback on the special channel on Discord. And we are very happy all. So um, uh, I'm going to start with the questions. Um, so just give me one quick minute. Um, do you want to say a little bit till I start, James, about your position in Hack the Box and how it changed over the years? And how did you actually start it first in Hack the Box? Yeah, sure. So um, I title CTO at Hack the Box. Um, most of my work involves uh, helping to plan and implement uh, some wide ranging changes on the platform to oversee development of the platform as well as uh, helping to implement new features. So it's it's quite a varied role. Um, it's changed a lot over the years from when I first joined. It was it was Harris and myself. That's Chap, the CEO, um, just developing the platform ourselves uh, in our spare time. Um, and it's kind of evolved into something where I, I rarely get to work on the actual development side, and it's all uh, a bit too managerial for me. But it's still it's, it's good fun, and we do get to still work hands on with the platform and work with the community as well. So it's um, it's an interesting position, that's for sure. Um, thank you, uh, thank you for this introduction, and I have to say we all admire and uh, thank you for your work that you do for Hack the Box. Um, you are actually one person that helps everyone and devotes time to answer to every uh, question we have. So thank you very much for this, James, and being such uh, an inspiring leader. So it's time to start with our questions and uh, let's uh, deal with the first one. So what is your favorite programming language? I think it would have to be like a hard toss up between, um, between Python and probably Node.js. Uh, Python has been, I've been working with for much longer than Node. Uh, Python is mostly what I've used for creating like proof of concepts for exploits, for doing some heavy multi-threading, for uh, doing some cracking on non-usual non systems like uh, like on uh, Bitcoin. I've done some work on that with uh, auditing the, the, uh, uh, the, the base there. Node.js, uh, I got into relatively recently, I think, within the past five to six years in my previous position. Um, and from there, I've, I've really got in love with it very nicely because it's, it's very easy to put together quite a powerful project. It's got a great community behind it, and um, it's yeah, very easy to work with and makes very powerful projects with it very quickly. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it'd be a mix up between those two. Um, I've played with some Golang recently as well, which I found quite fun. Um, I want to do some more with Go in the future, uh, but it's, it's finding the time. So, um, yeah, that would be my, uh, my answer to that one. Okay. Um, perfect. So, uh, let's start with the next one. Um, so, let's say, um, as a beginner, uh, starting in hacking, is there something that you would recommend? Um, I'd probably recommend to get into uncomfortable positions, if that makes sense. So get yourself in the deep end, get to a position where you are um, out of your comfort zone, where you're stuck. Um, you need to keep going and break through that and keep your persistence. And it's important to learn not to get bogged down on ages on a single task. Um, and to take advantage of the communities. Uh, and I mean, not just the hack the box community, 
but also like on Twitter and uh, standing on the shoulders of giants kind of thing. You know, there are lots of people out there with some excellent knowledge to share. Um, within our communities, we've got like write-ups and things that are shared with regards to Hack the Box, as well as Ipsec's excellent videos. Um, but then further afield from there on the uh, other communities like Twitter, as I've said, there's so much information out there. Um, and even if you just read through and repeat the steps that other people have done, if you look and understand how their exploits and tools work, it's still part of the learning process. It's, it's like uh, muscle memory. Uh, each time you go through it, it becomes, starts to become part of you and part of your knowledge base that you can draw on without having to go, oh, what did this person do? How did they do it? Copy, paste, done. It becomes part of your own tool set and your own knowledge. So, um, yeah, I'd say learning from others and um, persistence and, and patience are some of the most important things uh, when getting started, for sure. It can be ex an extremely frustrating field to get into. Yes, but what I want to comment here, it's always not my ama, it is frustrating, but uh, every time finding it like is a new challenge that always it, it will enrich at the end of the day, you will always feel more fulfilled because there is never a way to know everything. Yep. So even if you're just starting in hacking, um, there, are now, there are people that are more in the start and even those people that are in the top, and they're omnis, there are people even better than them. So it's... Uh, and never a stopping journey, and that's the fun of it. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, there's no one out there who who can know everything in any field. Anyone who says it is a is a liar. But you know, it's every every step you make is is very gratifying. Like when I went through and first started trying my hand at binary exploitation, reverse engineering, just going through and getting my first ROP chain working, I was like, oh my god, this is excellent. I can't believe I've actually done this. And then, like a few days later, going through entire exploit chains on, on unknown binaries and it's uh yeah every 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 time you learn something and manage to get past that barrier it's, uh, yes. it's, it's that feeling which solidifies that knowledge in your mind yes i remember something like that when i was doing a, a phishing um a phishing campaign for a company and when uh, like they 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 um, the things that we had in the emails got caught, got spammed, like, uh, et cetera, and we couldn't get past. But uh, when we actually got our first victim, but of course, it, like, it was like, it was like birthday and Christmas and Hack the Box anniversary and all cool stuff together. Yeah. So, yes, the feeling is always fulfilling. And it's because you try hard for it. Mm. So, next. And let's go to the next question, which I really like. How has Hack the Box benefited you in real life? Okay, so uh, I joined Hack the Box as a member when it first started. Um, at that point, I'd had some previous experience in security. Um, my core is a, I'm a programmer by heart, um, went on to sysadmin and such. Um, but security was always a bit of a, a hobby to me. I didn't, it wasn't something I saw as a profession. Um, on Hack the Box, it gave me somewhere to progress that knowledge, progress in that field at my own pace. Um, it allowed me to uh, build my knowledge to a point where I was able to pass uh, certifications and assist in progressing security of the company I was working with at the time. Um, and of course, long term, it's, it's helped me to, to work for a company uh, full time as my only job, um, doing a job that I love and helping to drive forward a platform that I love to, to try and make it as, as good as it can to support those um, it, uh, the people we work with in, in achieving that goal. Um, uh, yeah, so it's it's really let me live the life I am, which is, you know, hack the box for life kind of thing. It's an uh, amazing company, amazing group of people. I couldn't be happier with, with where I'm working. But in for the personal side of things, it's, the, um, it's helped me to progress my own knowledge of security and make it something that I am – I hesitate to say proficient in, but um, more than a hobbyist now, let's say. Well, um, it's not, I don't want to be corny or anything, but uh, it's sometimes like uh, Hack the Box also feels like a family. Oh, it definitely. is, uh, yes, like uh, it's uh, beyond anything anyone could explain. So it's very nice. Yeah, for sure. So, what is the platform vision for the next five years? Maybe the Roadrunner version, but uh, we can discuss five that years. next time. <laughs> five years, uh, five months, uh, I could do that one. Uh, five okay. years. Um, 
Uh, for me personally, I want to see Hack the Box uh, be a place or even more of a place where people of any background or skill level can come and under their own steam and potentially guidance by the platform, being able to get to a position where they're able to start a career in information security. Um, and I'd, I'd love to see Hack the Box as well uh, as a company that continues in its efforts to support the community as we do now. I know we've had a, a great um, a growth in the community support area, which I know, Sati, you're, you're speci uh, specifically knowledgeable about being the community manager. And that's something I really want to continue because some of these conferences, we, we help out, uh, you know, giving the vouchers and such and sponsoring them. Um, it really helps to get more people on board and to grow their community and in turn grow the whole community, um, the uh, InfoSec community as a whole. Um, and it doesn't just help get people in the field, it helps people to, to build relationships between each other as well. And I think that's a really important part for us is to retain that um, idea of community and community support. Um, as for where else we're going to be in five years, you know, I want to see a like live gaming of hacking, you know, will be, uh, um, you know, that would be really cool to see a, a world, world hacking championships being run in a big arena somewhere. That would be amazing. Yes. But, you know, <laughs> one step at a time. One step at a time, of course. And just I wanted to say some because uh, for the community part, like um, there are so many people behind it helping every each uh, conference, every each meetup, every each post that we do, the whole marketing department, the whole development team, the hiking development team, the sysadmins that are running like crazy to create meetups and stuff. And like all those things that happen would have happened with the contribution of the whole company. And although we, it's not like only we do the sponsorship, just out of it, we, Hack the Box mission is to make a cybersecurity training accessible to everyone. And um, we will continue to do that uh, as long as we are okay and uh, we can continue to dream. And of course, there's relationships in Hack the Box. Like, I believe I... Even with the Discord uh, team, we say like we are family. We have uh, another friend. It's a very strong relationship. Um, and of course, to my colleagues. Um, so why hack the box? That is a nice question. I think you've skipped ahead one, but I'll do that one now. Yes, <laughs> I did. It's all good. Uh, why hack the box? Um, so uh, having started as a user of Hack the Box, um, I can say it's one of the best platforms I've, and I'm probably a bit biased working with Hack the Box, but I can say it's probably one of the best platforms that enables people to learn by doing uh, in a safe environment, not just a safe environment, but also a legal environment. Because I mean, uh, yes, there are bug bounty programs out there which allow people to practice within the scope of the bounties. Um, but I know a lot of people who have gone out and um, attacked real-world targets without permission and got into trouble for it, which is, you know, not good. But what Hack the Box does is it provides a, an area where you can go and safely practice any attack method you want, essentially, within the rules of, you know, decency. You're not going to go and DDoS all the, uh, DOS all the machines kind of thing. Um, and uh, as the platform's grown, it's... it's it's become uh, much more known as a, a place to learn. It's 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 a, turned into a community. Uh, it's a way for community uh, for companies to find new talent as well. So we've got people, many people who have found positions in the infosec community through Hack the Box, either directly through our careers paths, uh, the career careers pages that companies post job adverts in, um, or being approached by companies going up. Oh, you're like number. 10 on you know the hall of fame you know come and work with us and it's um to think that this has come from a single platform that um our ceo created uh three three years ago is just mind-blowing yeah and what inspired you to create the platform well you're not uh, the one creator yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so um the uh, platform was actually first created by uh, our CEO chap, um, and as I understand it, it was it was created as a means to aid in furthering of his own knowledge in security, um, and as a middle ground between um, expensive and sometimes 
not exactly worthwhile certifications, and the more sensitive, uh, time sensitive CTF competitions. Uh, so it's a, he created it as a place for him, for himself to practice these challenges and these skills. Um, but in the process, opened it up to the public, and that's the long and short of it, I think, as to why it was created and um, where it sits in the middle of all those other uh, means of learning within InfoSec. That's true. Um, and uh, when we will see more Endgame Labs, RPG1 uh, was the best experience I have in HTV. Thank you very much, Stone. Although that question, you must say, it was written before Battlegrounds, so maybe that has changed now. Mm. Uh, and also, any plan for story mode boxes on regular labs? Okay. Um, so, with Endgame Labs, I, all I can really say at the moment is soon. Uh, we do have more end games in the pipeline and various stages of development and completion. Uh, we've got some very cool content coming with regards to end games. So, yeah, all I can say really is soon. Um, as for story mode boxes, uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, I think, I think in the history of the box, we've had two which have been kind of related to each other, which I think was grandma and grandpa. If I recall correctly, they had some kind of relationship between them. Um, but story mode boxes, that would be quite cool. I mean, even if it's just a progression of the story of one box to another and no actual direct um, requirement between each other, like you know, a small AD lab or something, um, but having a requirement of completing one box before going on to the next, or maybe not a hard requirement, but something that provides a narrative to hacking the box and yeah. a bit of backstory. I mean, that would be, that would be pretty cool. Well, we actually do have, do have that for some of the challenges. We know that Makelar's challenges always come with a very cool story <laughs> behind it, um, to say it in Jigsaw 2, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, of course, for pro labs, uh, there's, uh, there are stories like for Dante, not story, but uh, you have to solve many different parts in order to be able to pivot to some other parts. So like each uh, link is connected to the other in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but the story would be very nice indeed. Yeah, I, mean, I definitely agree with regards to the pro labs. They are more of a point in time, a, an engagement against a company with a with a background, with a history, with a with a narrative behind it. So, yeah, pro labs definitely capture that. But um, for machines, I think that's something we could probably talk about. Okay. So another question: uh, What uh, with the experience that you have now, would you do anything differently at the beginning of the story of Hacker Box? Um. Buy more servers? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, we've hacked the box as a company and as a platform has gone through so many iterations um, over the past three years. I don't think we could have easily foreseen um, the challenges of, of growth and the limitations of technology that we've come up against um, very easily back then. So, I mean, I think we followed quite a good progression from where we started and where we are now. Um, what would I do, have done differently? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. That's a really tough one. <laughs> uh, I would say, from a perspective of technology, we, we started on AWS for hosting some of our services. Um, and I would say that after about six months or so, we decided to switch to one of the different cloud providers, not just from a pricing perspective, but also from a performance perspective. This is from for some of our more front-end services, like the website and such. Um, and I would say that really helped us with dealing with the influx of additional users. Um, yeah, I, I'll have to come back to you on that one. <laughs> it's a, that's a tricky question to answer. Yes. So, uh, a very close question. What was the biggest challenge with uh, creating Hack the Box over the years? I think that kind of goes into the previous one was the, uh, the scaling of the platform. So, we started off with you know, a few users in the beginning in uh, April 2017. We um, quickly grew up to 100,000. Uh, we brought out the VIP labs, the Endgames Fortress, et cetera, Pro Labs. And 
keeping on top of scaling without over provisioning or under provisioning our infrastructure was uh, a real challenge um and so the main back end which drives our our lab provisioning and maintenance has gone through as i've said numerous iterations like for i think we're on iteration number four of the automation behind the scenes um and in order to continue uh, and that was in order to, to uh, accommodate the growing user base um so yeah scaling the supporting hardware behind the scenes is definitely probably one of the biggest challenges finding the best suppliers for the hardware and um implementing or developing the 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 automation that helps to drive the the labs and and make sure everything works is uh, probably the biggest challenge we've had okay well said and one other thing more personal um how tall are you <laughs> uh six four last time i was measured six foot four so that's what 200 centimeters or something okay so like okay i want to share a story of uh, hack the box behind the scenes um so um we were at the office and uh, for uh, i think this february it was before before covid um and um we were all together and we were trying to take a photo and uh, it would be you, Chap, and Aris. <laughs> all of them are tall, but like you stand out so much. So you had to like, <laughs> yes, and we can understand that you are behind us because you like, there is a bit of shade where you walk behind us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but okay, these things happen. But um, it's cool. It's cool. You have a unique trademark. You are the, the good heart giant of Hack the Fox. Uh, good stuff. Okay. Well, so let's go to the new one. Um, I, I want to mention at that point that uh, thank you guys. You submitted a lot of questions that uh, were more close to um, beginners. And we decided in order to do all the beginner questions of this, uh, Amat, to do one or two maybe, how much are needed in order to answer all your questions, dedicated to beginners. We kept some of the questions in order to help you, but we will do a special Lama just for that. Um, so let's go back. Uh, what to study and start with outside of HTB? Um, to be awesome uh, when trying to advance your skills inside HTB. So how to start before in order to get better when you're in. Okay. Um, I'd say, uh, well, I started as a programmer, and that's kind of where my heart's at. I'm a programmer by heart. Um, but if, as anyone knows who's worked as a programmer, eventually you start to get into the system admin side of things. Um, and, of course, when you're working with systems and infrastructure, you kind of tend to get a, a touch on security as well. Um, and I found that a solid base in programming has been extremely useful for me um, when working in security. It, it kind of lets you, uh, it gets you into a logical mindset to follow through how a feature um, may have been developed or implemented, how a vulnerability may have come about. Um, and, of course, sysadmin is equally as important gives you knowledge as to how the systems behind the scenes work, what they're reliant upon, how they could interact and potentially be abused in order to um, in order to progress your access through to the end goal of the target. Um, as for what you could study, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I went to college for a few years, uh, did three different courses there, um, but in the end, ended dropping out of all of them, if I'm to be honest. Um, purely for the fact that that structure of education and mostly the, the quality of the education back then, this is probably nearly 20 years ago, wasn't up to par as to what I wanted to do um, and as to where I was at the time. Um, so I turned to uh, self-education, to teaching myself, to uh, experimenting, to um, implementing and developing tools and tasks and that kind of thing. Um, and so... I'm not saying that's the path for everyone. Uh, for some people, the structured education is better. And I'd say the education systems right now um, for information security and technology and development in, in general are much better than they were a couple of decades ago. Um, but for some, I think the self-driven path of 
experimentation, development, implementation, repeating that pattern and getting into development and systems is probably a, a really good, set you up for a really good base in um, starting in uh, Hack the Box and security in general. I think you said it all. I would like to only add a small thing that we have seen amazing hackers uh, throughout Hack the Box that uh, have not even studied that or uh, are from completely other um, departments. Um, so it's mostly your passion and wanting to research and Google is your friend. Um, and this is not a sponsored video, but actually everything is out there. <laughs> so yeah. that's that. Um, so what can we expect in the future of Hack the Box? Mm. Uh, what else is in store for us? Mm. Uh, can, you get, can we get some insights? Uh, so uh, you mentioned, Sati, uh, Battlegrounds. <clears throat> Pardon me. Battlegrounds released recently, and we're going to be continuing to evolve that product. Uh, we're going to be bringing out some new uh, game mode se server sieges, uh, which has already been announced but not released yet can't really give you a time for that yet i don't think um so we're really looking to progress that because that is like a core gaming mechanic in hack the box i mean battlegrounds is i i rarely get the chance to to play machines or challenges anymore but when we went through the the uh, testing battlegrounds i mean yeah that's great fun so i'm really excited that's going to be progressing a lot and the team have been working very hard on that for the past year or so um, of course, our existing products are going to continue to evolve as well. We're going to be bringing in more pro labs, more end games. Um, we're going to continue to evolve the VIP benefits, which we've recently expanded as well with VIP Plus. Um, in addition, uh, our V2, the new Hack the Box platform, we're working really hard, the team working really hard to get that to feature parity with V1 and beyond. I mean, our short to medium term goal is to get you know all traffic shifted from v1 to v2 to make it the best experience of hack the box as possible of course in order to do that we've got to get everything available there but we're making great steps towards that um there are some other really cool projects in the works um which i'm uh, sorry to leave you on a <laughs> cliff edge for that one i'll have to uh, have to watch our social medias uh, media outlets for uh, for more news on that. But um, yeah, coming soon. Watch the space. Of course, and I want to mention um, that we just released also tracks for everyone that didn't saw them. Oh, yeah. uh, of <laughs> course, there are tracks. Um, like if you are in Hack the Box within with the existing content and you want to know where to focus on, but you want a quick and dirty solution, you can do only one thing. Um, just like go at the tracks and follow intro to AD, um, do anything with Metasploit, uh, password cracking, uh, web, um, all like that are uh, the Synac, uh, the offshore prep lab, uh, the pro, um, the track that is uh, helping you to start down there, some old and classics. Like their tracks are awesome, they are like a little story of Hack the Box because everyone is chaining around with the same mindset of the same vulnerabilities. Um, and they're very cool and very beneficial. I recommend that to especially for beginners and everyone who wants to focus on a specific field. For like someone who is not a CTF player, we also have a CTF player path. So track. So make sure to check that out. Um, let's go to the other one that is very, very interesting and it's from Juan, uh, x for age um, So, uh, how and when did you start your journey on the hacking scene? <laughs> um, my first foray into hacking was probably born out of curiosities for how systems uh, and at that time online games in particular worked. Uh, spent hours digging through code, figuring out how they communicated and operated, and then trying to replicate like how the the games and the programs actually communicated with the systems and how they worked. Um, throughout that, I've yeah, that was God, how many years ago was that? Um, more than I care to count. But there we go. Uh, I think the first vulnerability I found of significance would have been during my years at college. I found a vulnerability which allowed me access to 
all students records and PI. Um, this was back in the early 2000s. So, I mean, it's not, well, I was going to say it's not that long ago, but it, it really is. Uh, <laughs> but, um, nothing was done about it then. Um, but that kind of ignited my interest in the scene. I mean, I was aware of the scene before then, uh, of like the you know, 2600 designs and um, uh, the viruses that were going around, CIH and Love Bug when that was about. Um, but that finding really ignited my interest and got me started on rereading e-signs and white papers that were coming out following vulnerability disclosure, disclosures, like on Packet Storm and, oh, what was the other one? I can't remember the name of the other site, but I uh, started following those sites a bit more just to find out what was going on. Um, yeah, following the vulnerability disclosures and learning what I could from them. Uh, I suppose you could probably sum it up as, uh, as curiosity and how I could bypass limitations and do what should not be done, uh, which started me on the journey on the on the hacking scene. Um, and that was kind of reignited again three or four years ago, four years ago, let's say. Um, this is before I hacked the box when I started to go, you know, I, I do programming, I do sysadmin, I've done some pen tests internally, and started doing research into like WordPress plugins and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, then hack the box came along and um, yeah, here we are today. Yes. And uh, I, I want to say something. I don't know if she wants to, if we want to unmute her, because you said what else is in the store. I have not the permission to disclose anything yet. But uh, Duff, our awesome uh, marketing manager who is joining the chat today, um, maybe she can drop me Slack if she wants to unre unre unreveal herself and drop some about her new swag. But we are working also on that and there are, okay, I know desk mats are like heavenly. We all waited for it. We all love them. I even carry it to my home, to the office and back. Like I never, I cannot work without the desk mat. Do you want to tell um, the story about the, uh, the desk mats we got internally? That's quite funny. Oh, yes. <laughs> Guys, this is an awesome. Okay, should I go? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so... Uh, while we were in quarantine, um, we, we, we reached uh, 300k. So we were very happy, very excited. Um, <laughs> Daf told me that uh, we covered everything and uh, maybe she will join to the next one to share more about our store. So we will be very happy to hear you, Daphne, and uh, about your marketing overview of Hack the Box. And so, um, let's go to, to where it was. Yes, so we were at 300K, COVID, mm -hmm. everyone was in quarantine. And you know, Hack the Box, it's a very global company. We have people from Brazil to Greece to UK to America to Tampa to Canada to, to India to all over the world, actually. Uh, wherever it has internet, it almost has a Hack the Box player. Even it has so. a, and a Hack the Box employee and player, yes. <laughs> Uh, so, um, and uh, the department of the operation in the HR decided to, I actually have it right here to show it to you, decided to send us a gift in order to, to, celebrate the, to celebrate the 300K with a gift that was secret. And it will be a desk map of uh, Hack the Box Cube uh, with our username on the bottom. But what happened? It was like a meme because the, the, we all employees in different times started getting desk mats that had only one username. <laughs> and that was this one. I can show it. I don't know if you see it. It says Daria. Yeah. Okay. So Daria is the graphic designer and she has sent to them the mock-up. Um, but it was supposed for them to change uh, the usernames there. But they didn't. But the other thing is that some people do receive uh, with their nicknames. So we yeah. were discussing that Hack the Box found a very clever way to see who from the employees will continue not. Anyone that has the Daria mousepad has uh, secured his position. Anyone else? <laughs> Like, uh, like next to Bondel, I have in front of me 50 very good employees. Unfortunately, some of you have to go. And they did it for a desk month. 
So, <laughs> yes, that's that. It was very funny. We were, and they were not the hack the box desk mats. We were saying, I received my Daria desk mat today. Yep, that's it. That was the uh, the hazing ceremony over. You've got your Daria desk mat, you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> Daria, exactly. You made the stand, and she's like the quietest person in the company. Like you will never hear her. Like she's so quiet. She's drawing. She's the girl that is doing all the social media posts and Naira, some graphic designer. And yes, yeah, she made her way through the company, literally. Um, so uh, let's go to the next one. Um, so, what were the first thing you needed when you started this project? Uh, so, as I think I've mentioned before, uh, Harris, uh, chap, our CEO, started the project. Um, but when I came on board, uh, specifically for me, was to improve my knowledge of hypervisors uh, about how we interacted with them, how we could drive the automation with them, um, as well as containerization later down the line. Um, and to work more hands-on with a language I hadn't worked with for a number of years, which was quite interesting because we were using a framework which essentially made the language, I wouldn't say redundant, but um, it meant a lot of the heavy lifting was already done for you. You got to work with a much nicer um, framework with regards to database querying and uh, working with models and object-oriented and all that kind of stuff. So... Um, but still getting to grips with the language again and remembering the syntax, you know, even to this day, when I jump back into development, I occasionally have to Google Google syntax. Switching between a variety of different languages uh, has its downsides, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so, and what is uh, the knowledge, another very close to beginner, that is required to understand pen testing in general? Hmm. Um, you've got to be inquisitive, you've got to, you've got to think how and why um you've got to be perseverant as well i mean it's yes some tasks you come up against and some uh elements of knowledge you go into researching and developing it can be extremely frustrating and the the idea of giving up or just you know going so this I'm, I'm not doing this is it comes up again and again but perseverance and determination are some of the things you really have to get into as well as the ability to uh, to research under your own steam, uh, to be able to research a subject, know how to how to search for information on a subject. I mean, yeah, we've got Google and everything, but you still got to know how to. You've got to know what to ask as well, um, and being able to take that knowledge that you you've gained uh, to use it in your future engagement engagements and, exp and avenues of exploration is something you've really got to get a handle on. Um, and so uh, knowledge to understand pen testing, I mean, to me, pen testing, security, programming, it's all the same thing. It's all a puzzle. It's a puzzle waiting to be solved. Yes, sometimes you've got all the pieces in front of you. Sometimes you don't. Um, and that's, yeah, it's, it's a puzzle waiting to be solved. And that's where the perseverance comes into it. So yeah, I'd say and I think that also um, replies to the next question, like how many years you need to be a really good pen tester. Yeah. And I think that is really only good dedication. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. I mean, I don't think I can really answer that question. Um, uh, people ask ask me sometimes, you know, how do I get as good as you in security? And like, what you don't you don't want to do better? Like, I I'm consider myself a hobbyist in security. I've, I've, yes, I've done quite a bit, but I'm still a hobbyist, I think. Um, um, Come on, give you some credit. Like, you're not a hobbyist. You know a lot of things. But it's, it's all down to the person, I think. Some people will come into this field and they will flourish within a matter of months. You know, they'll go from not knowing anything to being, like, a very proficient pen tester within a short amount of time. And so it's kind of people who have the, have the mindset, uh, problem solving of, of logic um, that can do very well. Um, sometimes, you know, people come in and be extremely frustrated and not be able to get it. And it's all, all down to each person. I think anyone can really get into the field. Matter of time as to how long it takes to be a good pen tester, eh, it varies very much from person to person, I think. Um, yeah. And it's a never stop uh, stopping procedure, oh, right? That's it. It's not something you just do and you're done. It's a never ending um, 
journey of, of learning and improving and solidifying your knowledge. It's like anything. Um, you forget things. You It's not something you just learn once and you're done. It's something you've got to continually keep up to date on, especially with security as to how fast the field moves, how fast new vulnerabilities come out. It's something you've got to completely keep on top of all the time. Exactly. And one very fun question, well, actually, maybe a lot of wonder and try. We know that. Um, has Hack the Box ever been hacked? Um, no, I'd say. Okay. I, uh, we have had incidents. Um, to date, we've only had one incident, incidents which really made us pucker on the back end, which was quite a while ago in the early days. Um, uh, Harris is going to hate me for, for saying this, but this is when we, uh, there was an email task that went out um, and something went wrong with it. I think it started emailing itself, which then emailed everyone else and a repeated pattern came up. But we ended up spamming thousands of our users back then, which was, you know, thousands back then, as in less than 10K was a su substantial number. Um, and that was disclosing email addresses to, to a number of those people. That was probably the most significant incident we had, we've had. Um, since then, of course, we've been targeted by DDoS attacks, not as much as we used to be, or if we have been, we've not noticed them. Um, and of course, people trying to find vulnerabilities. They see uh, Hack the Box as a hacking website, a hacking learning website, knowledge website. And they think, oh, they must not mind us trying to brute force all the um, all the pages on their site, or you know, mucking around with session session cookies and trying to find er errors there. Um, yeah. So so far, so good. <laughs> yes, we've got a good team um, behind us driving the project yes. and looking out for these issues. Exactly. So. Yeah. But the, of course, there is no perfection. No one is God, and um, let's hope for the best. Um, so, how? Uh, yes, the question. This is the question that was asked the most on the chat on Discord or the survey we had on social media. And it's time to do this question. Okay. So, uh, how did you grow so beard so long and so impressive? And what are you doing to maintain it so awesome? <laughs> um, I wish I had some magic answer for you. It's uh, laziness mostly. Started growing it since college in 2004. Uh, it's kind of stopped, stopped growing in length now. So it's, uh, I think I've reached optimal beard length for myself. But um, yeah, there's, there's no magic tips or tricks. Just let it grow. <laughs> Have anything that in order to um, to make it better? Because I have another story for that. <laughs> Daphne is here and she's listening. <laughs> Should I say it? Yes, fine. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Hack the Box, again, um, in, behind the scenes, um, we were doing uh, gifts to each other for the holidays. And we said because we cannot buy for ever, all employees, one would uh, take for the other. It was like a, a lucky, like a secret Santa. Mm. And, but we didn't have a big budget. So Daphne, our marketing manager, bought to James a, like, a, whole, um, how is it called? a whole series of beauty products to grow and have a beautiful beard. And it was very funny because we were at the and we were at the office and we were taking photos like uh, Daphne showing the products and uh, you posing. It was like one of the best days ever. I've still got remember. the uh, yes. the beard. Uh, what's it called? The beard groomer thing upstairs somewhere and uh, the beard oil down there. It's uh, yeah, that was a very nice present. Thank you, Daphne. The beard never smelled better after that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, do you think that uh, um, over uh, time penetration tests take uh, the form of a game and are gradually detached from the reality? Um, something we've thought about and chatted about before, um, thinking of uh, the 1983 War Games film, and something we you know, wouldn't see outside the realms of possibility. I mean, Hack the Box as a platform is aimed at providing training environments for people to be able to train themselves um, 
in a legal and safe fashion. Uh, I don't see why the concept couldn't be turned to actual penetration testing. I mean, it would be certainly a challenge from compliance perspectives, and um, I suppose the, um, the concern would be would any client really want their penetration test to be glorified and gamified as a you know put forward as a game to their uh, to the people attacking their platforms or evaluating their platforms rather I should say um, and I would have thought that could maybe reduce the pre professionalism uh, with which their toast testers uh, with which their testers approach the task at hand um, and yeah there's questions about data control and things but I mean it's I'd certainly say it wouldn't be outside the realms of possibility um, be really curious to see if anything comes up with regards to that in the future, which I'm sure it will, uh, because engaging, keeping people engaged in the task is, is really important. And that's what we try and do is to make it into a game, make it so they are, uh, they want to do better. They want to continue going. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, interesting question. It would be, yeah, curious to see what, if anything comes of that in the future, if anyone does jump onto that idea. That would be nice. Mm. Um, and uh, I think also we replied that uh, at the previous in another uh, question you said it but uh, let's mention it again when serv server seeds will be available mm. yeah so um, I'm afraid we can't share a specific date for server siege at the moment but as I've said before the team um, Battlegrounds has not been a short project they've been working on it for probably about a year or so um, the first Game mode is out, Server Siege is under development, um, and we're hoping to get it out soon, but that's that's about all I can say on that, I'm afraid, for timelines. Okay. And uh, let's go back to some hacking in your personal life. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first own exploit? Uh, what is it for? And in what language did you write? Um... Probably be uh, like an online browser game that I played in the '90s. It was to do with you like built out buildings in a company in a city, and you made money and you know tried to blow up your your competitors' buildings and that kind of thing. Um, I think it's called Netropolis or something like that. It was by a company called Tiscali in the UK. Um, so what was involved there was some automation and exploit of lack of rate limiting and game logic, which allowed players to essentially build unlimited wealth within the game and completely broke, you know, any kind of fair competition. Um, that was written in Perl, I think. Yeah, that would have been Perl, back in Deer. Um, one lesson I learned from that was uh, I course had a group of friends who played the game with and shared the exploit with them to say look you can do this this is pretty cool they ended up sharing it with more people and then with more people and uh yeah after not too long this game unfortunately fell to its knees the back-end database which was just a plain text database um fell to its knees and resulted in the complete wipe of the game world which was uh which sucked but it taught me an important lesson about responsibility but you know we or do stupid stuff as kids. Uh, thankfully, afterwards, it was I, I started to work with the company a little bit to try and give them my opinion on how these things could be solved. And um, yeah, hey, yeah. and these I think uh, to a lot of people, this is how they started their career by finding something, reporting it, and uh, then uh, the and then uh, taking them as uh, consultants in order to help them improve their cybersecurity posture. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the other preface as to how like bug bounties started is a, a obvious fact that there were people out there with that inquisitive nature who wanted to not profit off of these vulnerabilities, but to help the companies by reporting the vulnerabilities and keep bridging that gap between um, these people in the community and the companies in the back end and actually having somewhere for them to communicate is something great about bug bounties, I think. I mean, it's bug bounties is a whole other question in itself, but um, it certainly provides a means of communicating with these companies because some companies are ridiculously hard to get get in hold of um, to disclose anything. But there we go. That's another question entirely, I think. Yes, exactly. And uh, very close to careers. Um, I think maybe only 
except for our beginners, we should do a, maybe a career summer because we have many things about the careers and certifications. So let's go into that. Um, what do you think, what's your view about certifications? Do they work? And some of them do expire. And after that, you're not a hacker anymore. What's up with that? What do you think? Um, I think certifications do have a value, but only for some. Um, they can be limiting due to price or time commitments. Um, but they can also be extremely rewarding. I um, mean, this question mentions um, having certifications that expire. I mean, in, in some ways, that's understandable. I mean, the, the CISSP, for example, having to renew that, it's, that's a certification that you're only going to take if you're going to go right up to like the top levels of you know, like SSO kind of thing. Um, but um, uh, Sorry, CSO. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think they can definitely be useful. Some of the more widely acclaimed certifications can certainly open up doors with regards to uh, employment and job opportunities. Um, but unfortunately, some of them are, as far as I understand it and from what I've read, just pretty much garbage and not worth doing. But again, it's um, it comes down to what you take away from the certification. Are you purely doing it as a box ticking exercise in order to be able to be applicable for a position? Or are you doing it to progress your own knowledge? Because even some of those garbage, what, well, from my opinion, not worthwhile certifications, um, even those can teach something. Um, it's what it's, it's why you're doing them is, is what's important. Exactly. So I'd say yes with a but. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Very nice place. <laughs> and I want to mention it. I want to mention something also here because it was like a very viral that comparing its certification and its company with the other. Everyone has to give something to the the market. They're they're mm -hmm. not. It cannot be only one ruling everyone and yeah. knowing everything. So mm -hmm. it's everyone has can bring their own view on this product that security is. And as James could not say better. It's what you want to take out of the certificate and choose and choose accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's go to the next thing. Um, what advice uh, would you give again to beginners that struggle so much with uh, some basic exploits? Uh, I think I've touched on this already, but I'd yes. I'd say learn from others. Um, I mean we. We live in an age where um, information is so freely available to us. We've got so many talented people within the community who are more than willing to share um, what they have done. And it's very easy to go through and, and find these people. Um, I find Twitter to be the best. I think I've mentioned this further down, uh, but uh, Twitter to be one of the best places um, to find these individuals. Um, so, Advice to beginners struggling on basic exploits. Learn from others. Uh, go through walkthroughs. This is what I started to do when I started doing Vulnhub. Um, I read walkthroughs for older machines, and then when new ones came out, I would try and apply the knowledge I gained from the machines I had read the write-ups for. And again, the more you repeat these kinds of things, the more it's going to become second nature to you, muscle memory. Exactly. And uh, what uh, I would like to say here that um, you should never stop. It's 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 never stops. Like try fake it till you make it. Uh, I <laughs> couldn't say yes, better. Tell yes, that is. I did say on hub. That is off sec. Yes. Credit where credits to you. Um, send uh, fake it till you make it. And of course, like like now that we have also Apex here. Um, Guys, do not forget that uh, even when he does a box, he's like, oh, my God, it's not working. And then you say, I don't remember, I think it was Fati or another, that, and he named uh, his payload, um, please work something because of his station. So even very, very, very good and top hackers that uh, you wish you're like that, they also struggle. So you struggle for the basic, and they struggled also back then. And, of course, there is always progress in your career mm -hmm. and uh, 
How viable are your, uh, is your amazing platform to beginners and how do you approach uh, level up to this category? I think we answered that also with all those uh, questions with charts and everything. Generation, mm. go over it more. What do you think, James? Um, I could expand a little bit. Um, okay. So, I mean, Hack the Box uh, is a platform intended for all. Um, and while, while content ha in the past has been more weighted towards those with a background in security, uh, we're, we're always committed to providing more and more content to enable those without a base knowledge uh, to build up their skills um, uh, through, play, through, through playing on the platform. And our main, main goal at Hack the Box um, when, it, when we began and even up to now and way off into the future uh, is to bring more people into the field to help fill the, the skill gap with information security. Because, I mean, all of our lives, everything we do depends upon technology. There's only going to be more and more people required. So, I mean, that's, that's one of our main goals, if not our main goal, is to open up the field of information security to anyone of any background, of any skill level. Um, and so, yes, the, the beginners who join the platform are very important to us. And enabling them to, to grow under their own steam or under guidance from Hack the Box, potentially, it's yeah something we're definitely very invested in. Uh, noobs are completely welcome to the scene. Everyone's got to start somewhere. <laughs> Awesome. So noobs are totally welcome, as you said. Oh, most definitely, yeah. I mean, Christ, I was a noob uh, not that long ago, so, <laughs> you uh, know, it's, it's all a matter of perspective. It's, um, yes. uh, some people see noob as a derogative term, which, you know, it can be used as, but, you know, everyone, everyone starts, starts at nothing and builds up to where they are. Okay. So, and... Um, Final question from the one that we had from the survey we had on oral social media, and then we'll go to the questions that you submitted, guys, today on our Discord channel. So what, and we close with a very good question from them, um, what was the biggest difficulty you faced in your, pref in your professional life or your student life, or even both, if you want, mm. to answer both of them? Uh, so I've kind of touched on this already, but I'd say... Uh, in my student life, I uh, said I went to college for three years, three separate courses, uh, and left them all um, because keep, keeping myself engaged was the hardest part. Um, I didn't go to university. The college courses I went to were subpar, as I saw it at the time. Um, they were supposed to be more than entry level. Um, I think the most interesting thing I learned from them was a bit of assembly and how to etch your own PCBs. You know, sending send them off to JLB PCB and then getting them printed. You actually use all the acid and that kind of thing. Uh, no, uh, no surface mount components then. Um, so yeah, I found in my student life keeping myself engaged was a massive problem, and that may just have been because I'd been self teaching myself before going into college. Um, but I think. I think now the education system, the courses uh, that are available in college and university and online and such have improved a great deal from 20 years ago. Um, so I don't know if that would be much as much of a problem for me if I were to be in that position now. Um, as for professionally, I mean, in my, in my previous position, uh, I started to try and do some more public speaking, even, even if it was just internal within the company at our small conferences. Um, when I came to Hack the Box, I started to try and progress that skill a bit more, um, which, you know, since joining Hack the Box nearly three, you know, three years ago, it's certainly improved. It's become easier, but I wouldn't say it's something I've become good at. It's something I can do, not something I like doing, but something I can do. Um, I've had some success and some spectacular failures, but it's, you know, that's all part of learning. You, you, you're not going to be great at something straight away. So, yeah, that, that would be my answer to that. Very nice answer, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, nothing in life is perfect. The only thing is that you have to try and try again until you achieve your dreams. Yep. Because uh, there is no one stopping you but yourself. Yeah. Definitely. So, and in our company, we have success stories about that. Uh, so, let's go 
um, to the questions that we picked from our also users. I have to say that we have three winners, but one one month VIP we picked. The, some questions and after random selection we pick through winners from those and we will pick also one winner from the questions that we submitted guys today and all of you you will get uh, one month VAP plus and we will DM it at the end of the AMA so uh, let's go to the first question that was submitted today why there are no OSX boxes in HTTP is it a, Apple a limitation with uh, creating VMs um, oh, this is something we've tried to look into recently, as I recall. And the biggest limitation, I think, is that in order to virtualize OSX, yes, it can be done on VirtualBox, on VMware, on other you know uh, virtualization ones. In order to be within uh, license with Apple, it has to be virtualized on an Apple product, so an Apple server. Um, the servers we have behind the scenes of Hack the Box are by no means small. We've got quite a bit of capacity there. But we don't have any OSX servers in there. It's certainly something we've looked into, certainly something we're considering, um, and certainly something we've raised with Apple as to whether they would be happy for us to you know, host some OSX boxes. Um, but... As with big companies, it's not something they've replied to us yet. So um, maybe in the future, um, we've found some suppliers for it. So it's something we might do. Um, it's just whether we can do it within compliance to their licenses. Exactly. How is uh, different? How different is gamified learning, like H two B, than uh, different and uh, than a real life methods? I would say with learning in a platform like Hack the Box, there is a great benefit to you. Um, you're at an advantage. You know there is a solution. You know there is a way to go. And that can be an extremely powerful driving force between you persevering, continuing, researching, reevaluating what you've seen before. Uh, now, I've the only pen tests I've done have been internal to companies I've worked with. And even those I'd hesitate to call pen tests. I'm not a pen tester by trade. Um, but I would say with pen tests, the thing is you've got to worry about scope. You've got to know what you can and cannot do. You've got to go into the unknown. You don't necessarily know there are vulnerabilities. I mean, uh, I'm not speaking for anyone in the pen, t in, uh, pen testing, but I'd say you know, generally more often than not, there are some issues you can find. Um, but I would say that's probably the biggest differentiating factor for me for for you there is that in Hack the Box and other challenge sites, you know there's a solution, you know there's an endpoint. In pen tests, it's more of an open question than a uh, an unfinished book. So, very nice place. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, but I want to say something else. When you do a pen test, you do not know what is going to happen. When you're doing a hack the box or a hacking, you know that something is always there. So you have to try and try and try and try until you find your correct track. So exactly. So let's go to the next one. Um, how uh, do what do you think that it's harder to start now than to have start uh, have started years ago when Infosec was young? I would say it's easier now. Um, yes. 10, 15, 20 years ago, there was so much more out there to attack. There were so many more vulnerabilities and vulnerable systems out there. Um, but I would say that shouldn't limit you from thinking, you know, oh, it's all gone and dusted, everything's fixed, everything's secure. It's really not. Um, there's only going to be more and more tooling coming out now as well. Uh, Back 10, 15, 20 years ago, yes, there was some tooling available out there, which is still in use today. Uh, but the fact that the community has grown uh, into a much more sharing community, which it always really has been, you know, with all the e-signs and such that, were, um, that came out and still coming out to this day, the hacker community is a very sharing one. But it's gone out of the, like, underground annals of, you know, like, um, uh, BB boards and that kind of thing, and not BB boards, um, called 
Okay. I forget the name. Anyway, out of the annals of e-signs and into the public eye, it's an acceptable profession. It's, it's something that people are willing and happy to share information about, and that makes it a lot easier to get into the field as well. News groups, thank you. Yes, that's, that's the term I was looking for, Reina, news groups. Okay, very nice. Um, and let's go to the next one. Um, what are the three, you have to pick only three, uh, most important things for young protesters to remember? Um, the first thing I'd say I've already mentioned would be scope. Pay attention to the scope of your target. If you, you're serious about going into the field of uh, pen testing as a career, scope is probably one of the most important things you could ever pay attention to. Uh, last thing you want to do is to go into engagement and knock down a production uh, production environment or infrastructure or servers with you know trying a, a DOS exploit. Oh, can the, does this work? Oh, hang on, why are those alarms going off? You know. <laughs> You've got to pay attention to scope. And that's not just in being a pen test. That's in doing bug bounties as well. That's in attacking targets um, or evaluating targets without permission. Um, so first thing I'd say would be scope. Um, second, second I'd say would be don't be afraid to, to fail or ask questions. I know it's technically two things. Um, but everyone's going to come up against issues they can't get by and they need to ask advice for. And the nice thing about the security community is that for the most part, um, people are very approachable and happy to give their opinions, to give their advice, to give their tools. Um, and so this is, this is something I tell to other people as well with regards to like programming. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The worst thing you can do is get yourself stuck and be afraid that asking a question will make you look you know, foolish, stupid, unknowledgeable, et cetera. Um, everybody needs help now and again. You know, no one, no one's above having to, to ask someone for help. Um, the last point, I guess, would be um, take notes. You know, write, write down, write up to the things you do. Um, publish them if you want, uh, as long as it's not an active hack the box machine. <laughs> um, but uh, making a blog, I mean, that's, that's what I started doing as well with, with uh, again, Valmhub, with WordPress um, plugin research, with some other things, was writing a blog. Um, writing down my thoughts and my process and publishing it. And that wasn't just to go, hey, look, this is what I've done. This is what I can do. This is how to do it. It's the act of writing down and making it permanent, making it out, putting it out there that really helps yes. solidify information. Exactly. Uh, we are, that's what we really, really believe in Hack the Box to, to we, we said that before, but to make a training accessible to everyone. And that's why like we have uh, so things open to everyone so there's uh, i think this is also the main difference between uh, cybersecurity scene 10 years ago and now uh, 10 years ago everything where it was uh, small and everyone was not sharing and stuff now it's everything more public more open and people are sharing more and also we have a resources channel that it's like a thesaurus um so yes uh, i think this is very nice so, uh, someone wants to crack your password. Um, what's your mother's maiden name and the name of your first pet? Yes. <laughs> someone wants to find your safe questions. <laughs> um, uh, no comment. Um, I could fifteen <laughs> percent of one of them. I'll give you more than fifteen percent of one of them. Actually, the letter U. There you go. Uh, does anyone want to go and hack me now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, have you ever, do you use that to any hack the box infrastructure or anything? Something like that? Okay. No, it's, I don't use this for anywhere. My, my, my first pet, as I recall, again, I don't use this anywhere, so I don't mind saying, was a, uh, as I recall, a white alsatian named Gus. And I uh, had Heart attack. I was like two or three or something. I was still, no, probably younger than that. Probably not even one. Um, I've got a vague recollection of looking up to this great big white beast above me. Um, yeah. Big old white dog, Gus. That's what I recall. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite beer? Uh, well, I just finished a bottle of Oakham Citra Session IPA. It's a very good one. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I have not heard of it. Uh, do you know if you have a bottle to show us? But uh, uh -huh. no, it might be seem like a 
publishment. I don't know. It will be advertisement. I don't know these things. Oh, it'll be fine. Okay. There we go. Okay. Nice. <laughs> it goes with your T-shirt, actually. Oh, it does a bit. It yeah. has a T-Rex on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I have the new Hack the Box. <laughs> oh, and the socks. Because you've got to love Hack the Box. Um, uh, there so, was one question I... Oh, sorry. Um, no, we have one other, and then we can go to the rest. Um, are you aware of any zero days that uh, might have been found uh, when they were trying to solve the Hack the Box uh, boxes? And they found some actual zero days. Yes, I think there was one machine where a few zero days, related zero days, were found, CVEs published, etc. Um, I remember the Alamo thing. I can't remember the name of the box. Yes, I remember the, the, the user. Mm. I don't remember the name of the box. Yeah, short answer, yes. Uh, long answer is, I'll have to get back to you on that one because I can't remember the name of the box. But there certainly have been zero days found on boxes, which have then been reported to the um, uh, to the suppliers of the software. So, yeah, that's been pretty interesting. <laughs> okay. So is there anything else specific you want to answer because you were about to? Uh, yes, there was one question. Where's it gone? Um, can't remember who asked this in the question, uh, your questions channel. I think it was the first one to post in there. Uh, this is quite a funny story. I have probably told this last time, to be honest, but I'll tell it again. No, so uh, how did you get into the mix of things with getting Hack the Box running? If I'm understanding the question correctly, it's how did I, how did I get into Hack the Box as a team member? As a team member. So, uh, yeah, I joined the platform shortly after it opened. Uh, started hacking through machines, um, solving most of them, if not all, I believe and then started to like help the community um you know answering questions and such um there was one machine which i think was 1010 or something like that uh having real trouble with and i ended up just firing up wireshark and going you know hell mary's got to be sending something back to me or something like that anyway didn't find anything from 1010 um but i saw some requests uh some tcp connects coming back from another ip an ip that wasn't listed on the machine list at the time. Um, so I thought, oh, okay, what the hell, I'll open up a port listening that's trying to connect back to me on port 8080 or something, or 4444. Um, listen to the port, connects back, get a root shell. Okay, get a root shell in the box that's not listed. So I reach out to chat the CEO, and he's like, how did you get access to that? What did you do? You know, um, and it turned out that I had actually uh, picked up Chap's DHCP lease from when he was testing a machine that was not yet released. So I picked up his lease. Um, I'd seen the connect back coming. I'd connected into a box that he was testing on the network that wasn't ready for release. And he was like, well, do you want to come and join us and work with us? And yeah, that's kind of how it started, which is, you know, the stars kind of aligned that day, the chance of picking up someone else's lease. Not only <laughs> picking up the lease, but picking up a lease that was actively connecting back with a machine. It was crazy, crazy stuff. Um, there was another one. Uh, oh, no, we've answered that one yet. Never mind. So, okay, yes, I think we pretty much covered everything. Uh, RB, yes, and we made it on time one hour and almost 30 minutes. So, we are good. Amazing. Okay, so... Look at the channel, make sure if there's anything um, that's quickly come up, but I think we've, we've done pretty yes. well there. I think if there are any questions that uh, we should answer to the next time, you will, of course, resubmit them, and we will do, from now on, it's our gift to do one a month per month and see how it goes. Maybe mm. we'll move over to another platform, um, have more guests. But we'll see the future of how it goes. Um, you know that almost where it happened sometime like uh, one or two years ago almost. But mm. uh, now it's like the most official than first Hack the Box Summer. And uh, that's all, guys. Thank you very much all for joining today. Uh, I know I learned some stuff I didn't know about Hack the Box. And uh, I remember for I don't know how long. And 
Thank you very much, James, for your time and your dedication and um, sitting to prepare for anything. Uh, thank you very much all. And most of all, thank all of you guys. First of all, thanks to the Discord moderators. That helps a ton with a lot of rehearsals and pretending they are you and in order, you know, to do the interviews. And, of course, the whole Discord team. And most of all, all of you guys in the community, thank you for being so passionate and thinking those awesome questions that are going to help the others. And, of course, thank you for joining our awesome mama today. That was a wrap. We are looking forward to the next one. We will upload the video on our YouTube, uh, so make sure to tune in. Not today, maybe on Monday. We will update you on our social and, of course, in Discord. Where else? And uh, that's it up. Thank you very much for joining. Um, have an awesome evening, morning, wherever you are. And that's all for me. Bye. Yep. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll um, make sure to do the next one on YouTube so we can get the video streaming working for everyone. This is, uh, yeah, definitely been a learning experience, but there we go. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks very much. Have a nice evening.